It's the most wonderful time of the year. As the holiday season progresses, we're going to hear that little jingle hundreds of times. Commercials on television, ads here on YouTube. For most normal people, the holiday season is one of the best and also one of the most stressful times of the year. For most of us, the next couple of months are going to be great. Me personally, Thanksgiving's my favorite holiday. Women, children, they love Halloween, they love Christmas. Most of you guys will have extended vacations over the next couple of months. I know when I was working a regular job, I was always off three of the last five or six weeks of the year. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Unless, of course, you're one of the 4,500 people working at CNN. That number is expected to drastically decline. CNN President Chris Light sent out a memo warning employees that layoffs are coming and they're coming soon. Now, I don't take pleasure in saying that. I don't like seeing people lose their careers, even if they're a pirate pounding shit fuck. But perhaps one of the people Chris Light is looking to put out on the streets is Christopher, no middle name, Wallace. Oh, Chrissy Poo, Chrissy Poo. Believe it or not, this male birthing person was once a highly respected journalist. Matter of fact, I have to give him a little bit of credit here. We saw what real journalism looks like last week when Chris Wallace interviewed New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Unfortunately, very few people saw this because hardly anyone is watching this show. The reason no one's watching the show is Chris Wallace had his reputation destroyed after being diagnosed with a severe case of Orange Man Bad. But he put the full court press on Eric Adams. The mayor tried to politicize the illegal immigration problem in New York City. He tried to blame Republican governors and mayors for busing illegal immigrants to his city. Chris Wallace? Chris Wallace checked him. He started naming Democratic mayors who were doing the same thing. He pressed him on New York's record crime rate. Several times, Eric Adams tried to pivot, tried your typical shit fuck maneuvering. Crime is not a problem in New York City. Crime is a problem everywhere. I am proud to say our crime rate is just as high as Chicago. We are working hard to make sure our citizens are scared to walk outside. This is our strategy to prevent the spread of the dangerous Fauci fungus. I'm not kidding when I say it. This was actually real journalism. One confirmed shit fuck applying truth and facts to a great A shit fuck who is allergic to both. At one point, Eric Adams was exposed to so much truth and hard data, he pulled a Joe Biden and collapsed on set. Watch for yourself. You're saying that the crime problem in this city is more perception than reality? No, it's a combination of both. Uh, New Yorkers must be safe. They're not safe enough for me. Even if it is less than six crimes a day, that is too many for me. And I'm clear on that. But, but Mayor, the New York City crime statistics are that year to day, crime in the subways is up 41% over the same period last year. And serious crime, major felonies are up even more than that. That's not perception. That's reality. Right. And as I stated, if you do an analysis of the six major cities in America, the crime waves is tackling all of our cities. New York City is the safest out of the six major cities in America. I also showed how I have turned around the morale of a police department, 27 year high and removing guns off our streets, the overproliferation of guns. So yes, we have a real crime problem that we are addressing. But part of that is the perception that every day those six crimes are being highlighted. Chrissy, this is all about perception. Of the six biggest cities in America where Granny Gertrude is assaulted and robbed multiple times every hour, my city is by far the safest. It only happens here twice every hour. That's what I call progress. It is your fault, Chrissy, our crime rate is so high. You plebes in the mainstream media keep telling people my city's unsafe, it's dangerous. This encourages criminals to hit the streets to prove you are right. If the media would stop focusing on crime and cops would stop arresting criminals, crime would cease to exist. Now, I'm obviously exaggerating here, but that mentality, it's not far from the truth. Like I said, credit to Chris Wallace for giving us a rare case of real journalism at CNN. The problem is no one saw it. 
which is probably why Eric Adams agreed to be interviewed by CNN instead of Fox News. Over at Fox News, millions of people would witness his shit fuckery. Millions of people would see him do his best impression of bumbling Biden. When you're interviewed by CNN, it doesn't even generate mainstream headlines. Last month, we discussed ratings for the debut of Chris Wallace in primetime Sunday nights on CNN. This debut was heavily promoted on other CNN shows that no one watches. Now, I'm sure billboards were purchased in New York City. Tune in Sunday night to watch Chris Wallace become our newest huge embarrassing failure. Remember this teaser of Chris Wallace possibly coming out as Christina Justina? Oh, uh oh, oh, it's totally crazy. Forget I'm a lady. Your man shirt, short skirt. Yeah, I like that oh, part. Oh, uh oh. And man, I, I feel, feel like, like a woman. woman. Ba, 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 da. Um, yes, you got the guitar part too. Man, I feel like a Rachel Levine. Bum, 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 bongo. This exciting, possibly even legendary interview with Shania Twain, who was last relevant, I don't know, in the late 90s, early 2000s, it drew 401,000 viewers. And the 25 to 54 demo, 44,000. It was an unmitigated disaster. CNN, they are paying this dude $12 million a year. $12 million, a million dollars a month. That's how much ESPN pays Stephen A. Smith to pollute society with his mouth farts. At least ESPN's getting something in return. Seems like every week Stephen A. is making headlines with his latest creation of mythical racism. Chris Wallace has been on the air for over a month now, and he has managed to generate headlines once. And those were only talking about his ratings tanking CNN Sunday lineup. Chris Wallace is making double the money Fox News is paying Tucker Carlson. He's on five nights a week in prime time, drawing between two, three million viewers. His audience is four, five times the size of Chris Wallace, and he's making half the money? What the hell's going on here? Chris Wallace, he did receive a bit of good news this week. His show last Sunday drew 410,000. Woohoo! We added 9,000 viewers. By this time next year, half a million shit fucks will be watching me, Chrissy Wallace. Now, to be fair, Chris Wallace is not the only huge embarrassing failure at CNN. This network is filled with birthing persons trying to take the crown from Bamani Jones. Now, as you guys know, this is an impossible task. No one does failure like Bobo the Bruiser. This past Wednesday, not one show on CNN made the top 50 on cable. They were beaten by reruns of Pawn Stars. They were beaten by their partner and butt bongo, Trevor Noah. Something called Assisted Living on BET beat every show on CNN. What the hell is Assisted Living? KC, it's an exciting show. They travel to nursing homes across America and film Bob barely walking in a slow-paced foot race with stumbling Sharon. The winner receives extra jello at dinner. Now, we have covered the demise of CNN extensively here on the channel. At one point, I told you guys things were going to get worse before they get better. But even I didn't know, I couldn't predict that things were going to get this bad. Chris Light claims to be moving CNN in a new direction. Initially, I thought the plan was to move the network towards the center, but what we've seen so far has just been a swapping of the shit fucks. Moving the lemon from prime time to mornings, moving Jake the Bongo Tapper from mid-afternoon to prime time. Chris Light, he did fire the donut diva Brian Stelter. That was a step in the right direction, but there was no replacement plan. The big idea was to replace morning coffee with Dunkin' Donuts with primetime pounding with Chris Wallace. That plan has dropped rating Sunday night 20%. For the first time since 2016, CNN is projecting profits below $1 billion. For the first time since 2016, huh? What happened in 2016? Oh, yeah. Orange Man Bad was living in the evil White House. Business was booming when CNN had a daily target, which, you know, that is typical for a woke business. Have you guys ever noticed for shit fucks to be effective, they always need an enemy? They always have to have a cause to be fighting for? 
Why do you think they pay lonely men to dig through years, years of Twitter activity looking for something from 2009 to exploit? Exploitation controversy? That's good for business. Over the next two months, there is going to be a massive downsizing at CNN. Now, of course, they're not calling it that. In his memo to employees, Chris Light, he didn't call it downsizing. Have no fear, my fellow birthing person. We are not downsizing. We are right-sizing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that took away all the fear from the pink-haired producer responsible for squeezing Don's lemons. What he was really saying in that memo was, if you're a woke shitfuck, get ready to collect woke welfare. Chris Light is trying to do the impossible. He is trying to eradicate the woke fungus from a network that is 100% infected. He's trying to make CNN different by moving it towards the center. Fox News dominates the conservative audience. MSNBC dominates the illiterate audience. On the surface, it seems like a brilliant plan, a good strategy. If I had to estimate, I would say between 65, maybe 70% of the country is right down the middle. Normal people. One of my good friends, he's one of the handful of guys that's been with me since childhood. He's been staying with me at the house this week. He's having a rough time right now. He's going through some things. He just needed a place to go where he could relax and breathe for a few days. He needed to reset. Anyway, we were talking the other night. He was telling me about someone at his job asking him about his political leanings. He replied saying, I don't know what I am. I guess I'm moderately conservative. I'm not far left. I'm not far right. I'm kind of just down the middle. I think the vast majority of people are the same way. Most of us could give a fuck less about most of the bullshit. We care about low gas prices, manageable inflation, low grocery prices, making enough money to provide for our families. That's what we care about. The rest of the bullshit is just noise. With that being the case, CNN wanting to move towards the middle, that's a brilliant strategy, right? They would appeal to 65, 70% of the country, right? The problem with that strategy, it's not entertaining. People living in the middle, we're not out in the streets protesting abortion, whether for or against it. We're not burning the neighborhood market that's owned by a respected black family in the community protesting mythical racism. You know what else we're not doing? Watching the news every hour of the day. Fox News, they hype up the conservative base. MSNBC riles up the shit fucks. Their audience watches them every night. You know what I was watching last night? 60 Days In, then Heat Warriors on NBA TV. With what I do here on the channel, I have to stay tuned into the mainstream media, so I watch it more than most regular people. But the point is... This new direction at CNN is potentially catering to an audience that doesn't consume the news. We'll see how it works out. It'll be interesting anyway to see who gets fired next. But let me know what you think. Chris Wallace continues tanking primetime ratings on Sunday night. CNN prepping for massive layoffs. Could Chris Wallace be on the chopping block? Do you think moving towards the center will boost CNN's ratings? Can it save the network? I'm skeptical. You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.